Hi, today we're going to talk about mechanical equilibrium a little more, get into some more of the details of it. First of all, with mechanical equilibrium, no physical changes occur, so everything stays the same. It's a state of steadiness. Notice I didn't say it's a state of non-motion, I said it's a state of steadiness, that's important. The equilibrium rule says the sum of all forces equals zero. Now you may not have ever seen this before, this is the Greek letter epsilon and it means add it all up, so what we're adding up is all the forces. So this, epsilon means the sum of, and F is forces, so the sum of all forces equals zero. In vector talk, up is considered a positive number, down is considered a negative number. That's just convention, that's the way all scientists have decided they're going to talk about vector quantities, so we're going to do the same. So now we have another force called the support force. I learned it as a normal force, but it's now called the support force because that's really what it does is support. So this is my beautiful picture of a book um, sitting on a table and it's not moving. The book's just sitting there. So let's talk about what forces are acting on it. Now we know the force of gravity is acting downward. That's the weight of the book. But what is keeping that book? What's the other force in the opposite direction? Well. It's, um, it's actually called the support force. And what's happening is the table is actually pushing up on the book. That's why the book doesn't fall through the table. That's why the book is, is in equilibrium because the weight of the book is um, pushing down and the support force is pushing up. So for an object at rest on a horizontal surface, that's this way, the force due to gravity is the force due to the support. Yeah, I used the same S the other day with spring. It's okay as long as you have it in context, okay? So force due to gravity is equal to the support force. And um, the important thing to know is that they're opposite in direction. Opposite in direction, one goes up, one goes down. They have to be in opposite directions. They're vector quantities and the sum has to equal zero. So here's some more about uh, support force. If you've ever scrunched down on a spring, you can actually feel that spring pushing back up on you. That's why if you've ever taken that little snake, that fake snake that's like a slinky, and you put it in a can of, um, it says nuts on it, with a lid on it, somebody opens it up and it jumps up at them, you can feel that spring pushing back up. Well, what's happening is atoms are actually being compressed, and that's, what pro that's what's providing the support. Um, let's look at a bathroom scale, though. Your bathroom scale, did you know this? It's a spring inside, and it actually measures how hard you push down and how hard it has to push back up on you. So, if, and it, please forgive my artwork, I'm not a talented artist, but if you have two bathroom scales and you are standing exactly evenly on those scales, each scale will show on it half of your weight. Go try it when you get home. Let's say you weigh 100 pounds, you stand exactly evenly on two scales, each will show 50 pounds. That's amazing. It's amazing. Because each is pushing up with a force of 50 pounds and you're pushing down on each with a force of 50 pounds. Um, if you tilt to one side, however, so you kind of go like that, so more of your weight is on one foot than the other, you'll see that the one where you put more of your weight, that scale will actually show more. Maybe it shows 75. And the other one might show 25, but the, the incredible thing is that when you add those back together, you're always going to get the same 100 that you started out with. That's not going to change. So it distributes differently, but the total is exactly the same. All right, equilibrium for moving objects. Now remember, I said a few minutes ago that Equilibrium meant it was steady, not that it was not moving. You can actually have equilibrium if things are moving. Things can be moving and they're still in equilibrium because it has to be moving in a straight line and at a constant speed. So it can't be slowing down, speeding up, turning left, turning right. Straight line, constant speed, then it's in equilibrium. Equilibrium is a state of no change. Everything stays the same. The sum of the forces are zero. If you have an object that's under the influence of only one force, it cannot be in equilibrium because it needs to have something to balance it out. Objects must be under the influence of two or more forces. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's a whole lot more than that. But it has to be more than one in order to have equilibrium. Friction. Now we're going to get into friction a lot later on, but I just want to let you know that 
Friction is, is in action, and it is the contact force between objects that slide, or sometimes they don't slide, but they're ready to slide, tend to slide, against each other. And that's going to be important because sometimes that other force that's acting on an object that you don't know what it is, sometimes it's friction. Now, if an object is at rest, it's not moving. It's in equilibrium. That's called static equilibrium. Static means unmoving. It means staying still. If an object is in motion at a constant speed and in a straight line, it can still be in equilibrium, but that equilibrium is called dynamic equilibrium. Now there's other equilibriums. We have rotational equilibrium, thermal, thermal equilibrium. We'll talk about all those later. But for today, I want you to know static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. Might be a good idea to write those down in your science notebook, along with the definition. So, for all things at rest, the sum of the forces have to equal zero. And for all things that are moving steadily, not speeding up, not slowing down, not changing direction, the sum of those forces, also zero. What's that called? Equilibrium. <laughs>